Hey guys, let's get more news about Miami Heat, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. 3 Head-Scratching Decisions The Heat Probably Wish They Could Take Back The Miami Heat did not have the best offseason and appear to be running it back for the second straight season. Miami made a lot of minor moves this offseason that left fans wanting more. Some moves Miami made were okay and some moves didn't make sense to me. Here are three they should want to take back. Thomas Bryant is a solid backup center who played in spurts throughout his first season in Miami, mostly in the case of injuries. He averaged just 11.6 minutes per game, the fewest since his rookie season, over 38 games. When the Heat signed him last summer, Bryant was known as a three-point shooter. He made just four all season. Bryant signed back to Miami on July 3, just a couple of days after the start of free agency. I don't have an issue with Bryant as Miami's backup center. My problem is with bringing him back so early in free agency. The Heat would have been better off signing Kashad Johnson to a standard deal, instead of a two-way contract, than bringing back Bryant. Had they waited for summer league, maybe they would have realized that they should go in that direction. If not Johnson, the Heat could have used the cap space to make an offer to Tyus Jones or maybe even bring back Caleb Martin. Signing Bryant so early in free agency might have taken the Heat out of the running for better moves later in the summer. I'm admittedly nitpicking with Kevin Love's contract. Since Love arrived in Miami, he has been a great addition to the team on the court and in the locker room. Love signed a two-year, $7.8 million contract to return to the Heat. The contract as a whole isn't bad for a backup big, but Miami did not have a lot of money to spend and paying nearly $8 million for a guy who couldn't play in these past playoffs? It seems like too much if you ask me. Still, Love will be a good mentor for first-round pick Kellel Ware and has proven chemistry with Jimmy Butler in backup units. Having love as a mentor is optimal for any young big. I just wish the deal were cheaper, since the Heat don't have much cap space left below the second tax apron after this summer. There's no question the Heat have a well-respected front office that has done well to identify and develop talent. But it's also fair to say they haven't been especially creative in retooling the top of the roster around Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. The Heat are limited in draft assets and finances, and failing to find creative ways to increase both will go down as a regret. The Heat might say they like their team and it's true that the injury bug wasn't kind to them last season, but everyone that matters in the East got better while Miami didn't do much to improve the roster. Instead, the Heat are banking on younger guys to contribute in order for the team to improve. Miami reportedly tried to acquire Mikal Bridges and DeMar DeRozan this summer but couldn't make a deal. The ideas were good but the execution hasn't been there and now the Heat have not done anything of substance this summer. When Tyler Harrow was drafted back in 2019, he quickly burst onto the scene for the Miami Heat. Even as a rookie, he showed a fearless mentality in big moments and clutch situations. His long-range shooting and playmaking quickly became an intriguing asset to the team. Unfortunately, years have passed since that rookie season, and Harrow has yet to finally make that leap. There could be an argument that he reached his peak in the 2021-22 season, where he earned the NBA's Sixth Man of the Year award. Harrow averaged 20.7 points during that season, but has yet to eclipse the 20-point mark in each of his next two season averages. Injuries have ultimately halted Harrow's progression for the Heat. He has not played in more than 67 games in each of his five seasons. Two of the Heat's recent playoff runs featured him missing most, if not the entirety of the postseason due to injury. In 2022, he suffered with a hamstring injury that limited him and kept him out of most of the Eastern Conference Finals. In 2023, he missed the entire playoffs after suffering a broken hand in the opening game of the first round. His absences haven't stopped the Heat from winning games over the years, giving fans reasons to believe Harrow may not be as crucial in the team's success. 
Here are three reasons why the Miami front office should finally pull the plug on the Harrow timeline. NBA star's father takes blunt jab at Miami Heat legend Dwayne Wade. There's never a dull moment when it comes to the rivalry between the Miami Heat and Boston Celtics. Heat legend Dwayne Wade is enjoying life by commentating at the 2024 Paris Olympics, but even there, can't avoid catching a stray. The father of Boston Celtics star Derek White, Richard, took a blunt jab at the three-time NBA champion. A post gathering over 200,000 views read, Dwayne Wade, I mean he, Derek White, probably has what a 15, 20-inch vertical, somewhat between those numbers. Mine was like 35, 36, inches. Little does Wade know that White actually recorded a higher vertical leap than him. This correction of Wade's commentary caught the eye of White's father, who replied, Internet is undefeated. Data points over opinions. The underestimated vertical of the Celtics guard should come as no surprise, considering his tremendous ability to block shots at 6 foot 4. While Wade was clearly off with his estimate, the comment was likely not intended as disrespect. This is not the first time he took a shot at the Heat, as he also grilled star Jimmy Butler after the Celtics' Eastern Conference Finals victory. Holding the next one was even better. Did I do it right, Jimmy? The remark was in reference to Butler's quote in 2023, refusing to lift the Eastern Conference Finals trophy. Is Miami Heat star Tyler Harrow's trade block return inevitable? Miami Heat star Tyler Harrow is no stranger to the trade block, meaning it's almost inevitable for his name to land there once again. Harrow is not the Heat's most enticing trade asset, as that title goes to veteran star Jimmy Butler, but his inconsistencies make him the most expendable. The front office taunts with the idea of moving him for a third superstar, including Milwaukee Bucks' Damian Lillard and Cleveland Cavaliers' Donovan Mitchell. These failed deals took place during summer, as Harrow seemingly vanishes from rumors in the regular season. This pattern will likely end in the upcoming season. The former sixth man of the year is stuck in a lose-lose situation when it comes to the outcome of the Heat season. Team president Pat Riley should entertain the idea of adding superstar talent for a championship push, barring high seeding at the trade deadline. Utah Jazz's Lori Markkinen is among possible options if he is not traded to the Golden State Warriors. This is Butler's final year under contract, putting a tank year out of the equation. The number one option proved himself worthy of this title in 2023, where Harrow missed the majority of the postseason. Not only did this damage his value to the organization, but also raised curiosity in the front office. His absence during their finals run poses the question of whether a different star resulted in the raising of the Larry O'Brien trophy. The front office gains even greater motivation to explore their options if the heat crumble in the regular season. Fans could see a complete roster revamp at the deadline, with Harrow and Butler seeing a change of scenery. Butler is an intriguing name for any championship contender, while the market for the 24-year-old will largely depend on his health. Fans should pay close attention to Harrow's situation once February rolls around, regardless of Miami's triumph or failure. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Tyler Harrow? Leave your opinion in the comments.